I used to work as a house cleaner when I was a 17-year-old guy trying to save up for college. The person I worked for the longest was a man named Jeffrey. I only spoke with him once when I met him, and a few times in between when he came home early from his job. That was it. I couldn't tell you if he seemed normal or not. He had a very serious rule, though. Not to go into his basement. He even left a big sign on the door. The curiosity ate away at me, but I did my best not to sneak any peeks. So one day, while I was dusting the furniture in his room, I just got a little snoopy and started going through his drawers. Don't ask me why. In his bigger drawers, there was just a bunch of clothing. I started going through the smaller drawers and found things like cameras, batteries, photo albums, and various knickknacks. Same thing in the middle drawer, but in the bottom one, I found a small wooden box sitting perfectly in the corner. It needed a key to open it, but I had actually taken notice to a small key that had been hanging on his key ring in the kitchen. It looked like it could fit in this lock. When I tried it, surely enough, the key twisted in the socket and opened the lock. What I found was disturbing. There was a pile of black and white photos. The first ones were just pictures of the house. But then eventually, I was in every single photo, in every single room of the house, including the bathroom. The most disturbing picture was a colored one that stood out from the rest. It was taken from outside one of the windows, aimed to me when I was in the kitchen. I put the pictures back in the box, except for a select few to use as possible evidence for something that I feared might happen. I locked it back up and put it in the drawer. I left everything else in the bedroom as is. I was about to leave the house and never return when I passed the basement door. Now that I wasn't coming back, I figured I should check out the basement so that the curiosity wouldn't forever eat away at me. I stepped inside and flicked the lights on. The air down there smelled really bad, like rotting animals. There were weird posters on the walls, a lot of erotic ones. I was shocked to even see some with boys and girls that looked under 18. There were two doors leading to either rooms or closets. I didn't go into them, but the horrid smell was the worst by those two doors. I finally realized there was a buzzing sound whenever I moved. I noticed in the corner there was a ceiling camera pointing right at me, but after noticing it, it seemed to stop moving completely. That was my cue to get out of that house. I drove home to safety. Jeffrey tried calling me one time after this. I didn't pick up. He didn't leave a message. I'm glad I never gave him my address. I was getting off from work at Stop and Shop after doing the midnight shift. When me and the only other guy working at the time went to our cars, a black pickup truck pulled up next to us. There was a man and woman inside. They looked like dirty hillbilly rednecks. The guy had a mustache and a beard, with a cap on and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. The woman had dirty looking hair. Then again, her whole face looked dirty. When they stopped in front of us, blocking our path, the guy sitting inside asked us if we have any spare change for gas. My co-worker dug through his pockets and dropped two quarters in the man's hand. I handed him a dollar in hopes that he would just drive off. The guy looked at the money in his hand, then looked back at us. I'm going to need more than that, he said. We apologized and told him that that's all we had. Bullshit, he said. I could see my co-worker was getting just as nervous as I was. The woman in the passenger seat had a devilish looking smile on her face. I walked around their car and speed walked to my car, as did my co-worker. I could see the man was spinning his pickup truck around. I turned the car on and immediately put it in drive and sped out of the parking lot. They seemed to be following me at first, but I eventually lost them. I pulled into a gas station and texted my co-worker to make sure he was alright. He texted back saying he was fine. I wish it ended there, but a pair of headlights entered the gas station. It was the pickup truck. I got back in my car. He tried to block me by pulling up in front of me. The woman in the car pulled a gun and started to lower the window. I yanked it in reverse right out of the parking lot. My back window cracked as it was hit by a bullet. I somehow managed to lose them once more and make it home alive. 
I found two more bullet marks on my car. It's so scary to think how close I was to dying. And for what? Unfortunately, there are so many messed up people in this world. Me and Andrew, my half-sister's cousin, were 18 years old at the time. We decided to go exploring in the abandoned asylum in our town. It was way past dark, there were no cars on the road, so it was probably after midnight. Andrew drove. We both brought our video cameras in hopes to catch some interesting footage. YouTube was only two or three years old at the time, and exploring abandoned places was a pretty big thing for YouTube videos back then, so we thought it would be cool. We had to crawl under a hole in the fence that someone else had cut. We both brought along flashlights, of course. We got in through one of the broken windows. There were a few planks on the floor by the window that had once been planked up against the window to prevent anyone from entering. We began our search, both flashlights on, along with Andrew's camera which had night vision capabilities. There was nothing but broken glass and graffiti everywhere. There were a few cracks and holes in the wood floors that led to blackness below. We didn't dare shine our lights down there. We both shared a few laughs, but I was creeped out as hell in there, and I knew he was too. The place was huge. We ended up in a small room with a dental chair and other equipment. It was strangely unsettling. The most unsettling room upstairs, however, was the bathroom. When we were in there, we heard a constant dripping sound coming from one of the stalls. When we tried to open it, it was locked. The opening at the bottom was far too small to crawl through, so we just left that room in a hurry, very creeped out. Behind one door, we found a stairway leading upstairs or downstairs. We wanted the video to be as scary as possible, so of course, like two teenage guys would, we went downstairs. There was a new set of hallways, much more creepy now that we were underground. There was a bulletin board on the wall with a bunch of old photos and news articles on it. Me and Andrew were checking that out, when a metallic thud came from down the hall. We shined our lights over in that direction, just in time to see what we were sure was a forehead moving from the hallway into one of the rooms. Andrew started screaming as we ran back in the direction we came. Now, I would have just thought it was a homeless person or something, but as we were stomping up the stairs, a single flight below us, we could hear steps following us. At this point, I was screaming too. The feeling of being in the back was horrifying. I felt that at any moment, I would be grabbed from behind and dragged down the stairs. But we made it back to the main hall, and down to the window that we entered from. We made it outside, and could hear through the window, the door to the stairway opening from down the hall. We got to Andrew's car as fast as we could, and drove off, never looking back. We were a young couple that had just moved into a new house. We had a bedroom on the first floor. The house had an upstairs, a middle floor, and a den. No basement. At night, we started hearing strange noises coming from below us. I checked under the bed. Nothing was there. The sound seemed to be coming from beneath the floor. But the house didn't have a basement, so it didn't make sense. We started to notice things were different in the morning, like certain doors were opened that we were sure had been shut the previous night. My wife's closet door always seemed to be open. We made sure to shut all the windows one night just to make sure it wasn't some kind of draft. The doors were all open the next morning. We had decided that it had gone far enough. The next night, we both stayed up, listening and waiting. The noises coming from below were louder than ever. Sounds like things being pushed around, moaning. I headed down to the den and put my ear against the wall, listening for where the sound may be coming from. It was coming from inside the wall I was up against, but a little lower down, below the den. I went back to my wife. I told her we had to stay up for as long as possible and see what happens. We stayed up until around 2. My wife started to drift off, and I guess I had shortly after. I woke to my wife shaking me, silently crying to herself. She pointed at her closet, which had been opened. There was some kind of hidden door propped open in her closet. It led down into the floor. I hopped out of bed and shined a light down there. It was a ladder, leading far down to some hidden room. 
I had my wife lock the door and call the police while I took my machete with me down into the secret room. When I got to the bottom, I found a light switch. The room had a table and chair, a small cot in the corner, and a bunch of toys scattered across the room. A scream came from upstairs. It was my wife. Somebody was trying to break down the door. I climbed up the ladder the best I could while holding the machete. By the time I got up there, they had already kicked in part of the door. They stuck their head through a hole in the door and looked at me. He was a dirty looking man. I saw craze in his red eyes. He must have seen my machete because he ran straight out the front door. I don't know what the room is for, maybe some kind of old bomb shelter or something, but I don't know who the hell that man was, how the hell he got down there, and how long he's been down there. I was 27 years old, moving out to live with my girlfriend in an apartment. It wasn't the fanciest place ever, as we weren't the wealthiest couple ever, but it was fine for us. The first night in, we already hated the neighbor. There was yelling and thumping going on all night. It was like they didn't sleep all night. My girlfriend wanted me to go over. I told her if it continued the next night, I would go over. We didn't hear anything of them throughout the day while setting up furniture, but when night came and we were trying to get some sleep, the freakish yelling and banging resumed, sometimes even bangs on the wall. I decided to draw the line and confront them. I knocked on the door, and a middle-aged albino woman answered the door. Her voice was raspy as if she'd been smoking cigarettes for the past 40 years. I politely asked her to quiet down. She told me to back off and mind my own business before slamming the door in my face. The noises and yelling only got louder after this. My wife said we should report them. I went to the front desk the following day, bringing up the couple that lives in that apartment. The doorman looked puzzled. He told me that only a woman named Kathy lived there. Her husband passed away five years ago. She was written down as only being one person in that room, so she was breaking a rule of the apartment building. The doorman went to go check out the room. The woman let him search the apartment. He came back to tell me that she was all alone in there, which seemed so odd. He did, however, ask her to keep it down. I thanked him and went back to the room. It seemed it had worked, as there weren't any sounds that night. I woke to see somebody standing by our bed. Anna? I whispered. My wife turned next to me. She was in the bed. The familiar raspy voice at the end of the bed said we shouldn't have reported her. I screamed and fumbled for the light switch. My wife started screaming even louder. By the time I turned on the lamp, she was gone. I slipped on my shoes and ran out into the halls in my robe looking for her. Her apartment door was open, but she wasn't in there. Where could she have gone so fast? Nothing was heard of Kathy for a whole week. Before one night, there were four loud knocks on our walls. Not thumps like the previous noises. These were actual knocks, meant to get our attention. We moved out a day later. <laughs>